When I was a young child, long before I received my first telescope as a Christmas gift from my parents, I often looked up at the moon and thought to myself, that is what the moon will look like in a hundred years from now, a thousand, from, a thousand years from now, and long after I'm gone. While looking up at the full moon the other day, I finally recalled those thoughts of so long ago and thought to myself, here I am, the same person as if transported through time, the living embodiment of those thoughts. This reflection gave me an inner peace and solace in a world that is most uncertain as of now, confirming for me that I am still that same young man I was on that night, so many orbits around the sun later. I remember how great life was back then and how simple it was. As a child, I also remember the beautiful dark sky of rural downstate New York in the early 1960s. The Milky Way and the Galactic Center took your breath away. In fact, it was so bright, it cast a shadow and you could almost read by it. Those vistas have been gone for decades now. And along with them, the inspiration that energized the nation to reach for the moon and the stars. And so we did. That same inspiration is realized by visually looking through a telescope, not by taking a picture of an object, as if you were in a clinic going for an exam, taking an x-ray, or something like that. Looking at the, scar the stars and the beauty of the night sky inspired hum humankind since recorded history, and that's now gone. And with Starlink, now able to circle the whole planet, even through a telescope, the visual observation that you could make will now be forever marred and compromised with artificial satellites, even with the new telescopes coming online soon, like the Vero C. Rubin Telescope and the uh, Giant Magellan Telescope and the Extremely Large Telescope. All these next generation telescopes will be now compromised. Looking at the stars and the beauty of the night sky inspired humankind since recorded history, and that's now gone. That combined with the ability to spread bad ideas at the speed of light, it's no wonder now we have the emergence of really new fringe beliefs. And I have produced a recent video about one. And the exponential rise in superstition and violent extremism, concurrent with an almost complete breakdown of society. One only has to look at the daily news to see how far we've gone. Why? because nature abhors a vacuum of any kind. And what we have today is an intellectual and moral vacuum born of a lack of inspiration. We need to take those eyepieces out, dust them off, and make sure they never get, they, they never get put away. Space exploration, reaching for the stars, rockets, planets with rings, moon craters, galaxies, exploding stars, were all cool back in the day. They were inspiring, and this stuff kids dreamed about. Astronauts were almost mythical hero, heroes. Astronauts were, to, were then and remain today heroes. Where did all that go? We don't look outward or upward anymore, literally or metaphorically. We have become selfish, cynical, and inward looking. Those great Apollo missions of the 60s and 70s were made possible by individuals who more, whose moral fiber and character were cast in the mold of service, born of courage and the desire for authentic human progress and exploration. Those sentiments, those ideas are now largely gone. The legacy of those individuals and their missions live on in the astronaut corps of today and was exemplified in the servicing mission for the final Hubble Space Telescope servicing mission, STS-125 in 2009, aboard Space Shuttle Atlantis. Former NASA Administrator Sean O'Keefe canceled SM-4 following the Challenger disaster, I remember it well, citing too many uncertainties for a mission that wasn't of critical national importance. The Hubble Space Telescope is an iconic representation of discovery and exploration for a good reason. 
What Administrator O'Keefe failed to recognize is that it doesn't matter what the mission is, whether it's servicing an orbiting unmanned observatory or a resupply mission to a, a fledgling lunar outpost. It represents us, humankind, in our tireless quest for discovery and exploration. That telescope has pushed back the frontiers of our knowledge and understanding and the literal horizon of what we can see. Spaceflight is an enterprise fraught with dangers and risks, and the brave astronauts accept those risks when they sign up for the job. And that's the one thing Administrator O'Keefe failed to recognize. Following his resignation, new NASA Administrator Michael Griffin rallied the troops and managed to put SM-4 back on the space shuttle's docket. The mission was a brilliant success and extended the life of Hubble at, by at least a decade, and it's been over a decade now, and it's going to continue well into this next decade. To say nothing of the enhancements and upgrades, but those, in, but those astronauts are a diminishing breed. Neil Armstrong, the commander of Apollo 11, and the first man to set foot on another world, our moon, passed away in 2012 at the age of 82. The remaining two astronauts, Buzz Aldrin and Michael Collins, are both in their 80s. Who is going to take their place? Not people who spend their nights looking at, um, at raw image files or looking at the back of a camera, but looking through the eyepiece of a telescope. That's who. Since the end of, since the end of mission for the space shuttle program, we don't even have a national low Earth orbit booster, but yet we succeeded, we successfully completed six manned missions to the moon over 40 years ago. We now have to rely on private enterprise and foreign governments to fulfill our commitments to the International Space Station. Why wasn't this a national priority when everyone knew the end date for the space shuttle program? It's a good question, right? <clears throat> Isaac Newton died in 1727. Albert, Albert Einstein died the year I was born, and Stephen Hawking has passed away, and nature wasn't very kind to him. Yes, we have some very smart people around, but we're simply not producing any more Einsteins or Hawkings, and I don't see that changing anytime soon. Yet, I'm still hopeful that in the end, the light of reason will be victorious, and the vision of of an inspired world, united together, looking upwards and outwards towards the stars. Our future and our destiny is exemplified by this young child chasing the Juno spacecraft along a Florida beach as it ascends into the sky. The light of reason will win out and we will prevail. In what could only be described as a visual metaphor of a bright, hopeful, limitless future, this image, iconic as it is inspirational, epitomizes what is the best in us, the potential we have to soar to new heights. A young child chasing Juno along a Florida beach as the intrepid explorer he slips the surly bonds of Earth into a brilliant blue, limitless sky. It's important to remember that we are evolving on two parallel tracks and which one we choose will ultimately decide our legacy, who we are and where we will be. Let us all choose the right path. And Albert Einstein said quite famously, imagination is more important than knowledge. And if you take a picture of it, there's no more imagination. When you look at it, there's still that mystery, that wonder that keeps you coming back for more. Okay. This is Dr. Jim Daly of Astronomy for Change. May you come to love the stars too fondly to be fearful of the night. The great philosopher Plato famously said, astronomy compels the soul to look upward and leads us from this world to another. Astronomy for Change is a nonprofit organization whose mission is to affect positive change through astronomy and science education. It is our belief that by inspiring and empowering current and future generations to become interested and engaged in astronomy and science, this positive change will be realized. If you found this video helpful and educational,
please like, subscribe, and share. Also, why not consider supporting us on Patreon? Head over to our homepage, astronomyforchange.org, click support us via PayPal or Patreon, and choose a membership level suitable for you. Every little bit helps, support, helps us produce the great content and further our mission. Also, why not consider becoming a member? Membership is free at Astronomy for Change. Choose the membership, membership link here, click it, put your name and your first name or, and your email, and you'll be added to our list. You'll receive a comprehensive digest of all our videos and articles and all our great content. Joining and becoming a patron helps us grow and improve and more fully realize our mission. Thank you. This is Dr. Jim Daly for Astronomy for Change. Until the next video, please stay well and keep looking up.